Dollar. Great programming coming up next on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. Stand by. Hold on. at its finest coming up next on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network in about two minutes. Stand by. guys are talking about stand by a great show coming up next on the Stewart media and entertainment network in about 30 seconds stand by don't go away stop 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 If they're talking about it at the barbershop, we're talking about it here on SME. Great show coming up in about 30 seconds. Don't go away. Stand by. It's time. Sit back, relax, and enjoy another great product on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. Yeah! Welcome, welcome. You're listening to the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. That's Maestro Styles. I'm Trey Frazier. Yep. Let's do it, homie. Just want to apologize to fans that have been listening last week. Uh, the episode kind of got cut off a little early. We had some technical difficulties. We're going to rectify that. Ain't going to be no more cutoffs moving forward. You're going to get a nice, fresh hour and a half show by yours truly. So, you know, let's get it popping. Uh, how, how was your week, man? Good man. Uh, let me let me start off light before I go in because obviously the 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 main topic is uh, D'Angelo Russell and, the, and you know what's going on with him and the Lakers. Right, right. But I was on Facebook the other day and uh, I read that MC Shan is tired of uh, KRS One talking about he won the battle back in the day and he wants to battle. KRS won again now at fifty years old and two in two thousand and sixteen. That's um, pay per view. Well, I don't know if it's pay per view. In fact, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's almost not. Just well, because I, I say it's pay per view because nobody's going to pay for it. Because <laughs> uh, uh, it's like this remind. Um, I don't know if you know about this, but a few years back, Fredro Starr battled uh, Keith Murray. I remember that. Okay, this was not a good battle. Um, in the scheme of what battles are now in 2016, I mean, yeah, uh, they threw on beats and just for people who don't know, uh, Keith Murray choked. Uh, I, it was bad. Like he was really bad. Like right. he lost to Fredro Starr. Not that Fredro Starr wasn't good considering, 
It was it was really really. But Keith really, kind of gave it away. No, nah, Keith was bad, man. He was he was bad. Some people say he was on drugs that night. It, it, I don't know, but it was bad. Right. And we all know him to be a better MC than what he displayed that day. Right, right. Um, it was bad, but that's kind of my reason why I wouldn't really want to see MC Shan Karras one because my mind of what battling is nowadays is a little different. So if they come with the old school cipher where it's not really dissing each other, it's more like ciphering and just seeing who got better rhymes. Or if it is dissing, it's not going to be the. It's just not going to be the same thing. Um, I'm I don't not super, it is. I'm, and I'm not going to pretend to be super hip to MC Shan as a lyricist. I mean, I know he was good based on the songs I've heard, right? But I got a long line of KRS One. You know, through the years, not only in the 80s, but in the 90s, and even in, uh, t- you know, past, you know, years beyond that, like when he came out with that joint with Marley Maul. Right, right, right. So I got, I, it's documented that KRS One certainly still can spit. Mm-hmm. So that was, a, that's another reason that I'm not really um, interested. I, I wouldn't be interested either. Just the fact that, you know, these guys are up in age, and I don't think that they can counteract with the style of battle rap that. Is of 2016. Yeah, like I said, um, yeah, it, it, it's just you just don't want to see. You don't want to. I, I I don't want to. If it's not like you know, shout out to Charlie Clips and right, right. You know, Hollow and Lux and, and you know those those caliber uh, T Top. You know that, yeah. that caliber. I hate to see legacies be kind of torn because guys are trying to come back and trying to do the battle thing and it's just not working out right. Well, I kind of hope if they have to do it, it's going to be like on a really small scale. And I think it'll probably be on a really small right, scale. Right. If it's on a really small scale, like, you know, just for the heads and not necessarily, like, they're not trying to make it necessarily a mainstream thing. Right, um, right. I'm with that, but I ain't with them trying to, you know, like, smack picking it up or, you know, <laughs> you know, you are... Uh, you smack are, uh, DVD. What's the other one? Um, it's, it's losing me, the other battle league, but... Right. I don't want URL picking it up. I don't uh, King of the Dot. I don't want King of the Dot picking it up. I don't want you uh you dub and nobody like that picking it up. Just a little you know, a little low key battle, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. And, you know, in a pool hall, you know what I'm saying? When you <laughs> streaming or something that Yeah, you, where fifty year olds hang out at, right? <laughs> yeah. So what's good with you, man? Hey, um, oh, before I get to that, folks, don't forget, um, we are on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. You can check us out on the Facebook page as well. Maestro's on the Twitter at Barbershop, S-P-O-R, the number two. And if you want to give us a shout out through email, uh, the email address is barbershopsportstalk1 at gmail.com. I had a pretty good week, man. The weather's kind of gloomy this afternoon as we're recording here on a Monday, but you know, baseball's here. Um, opening day was yesterday. We had the tournament games on Saturday. So a lot of stuff in the sports world. You know, life is good. You know, family's doing good. Getting ready for a trip to New York this weekend. So things are looking pretty good. They look pretty good. Obviously, the story broke as we were coming off the air last week. And so we're not going to try to dive too much into it because people have been talking about it all week long. But it's D'Angelo Russell and Nick Young and this whole thing where he's videotaping Nick Young confessing that he's cheating on or he's going to cheat on Iggy Azalea. I don't know which was which, but my my thoughts on it personally is D'Angelo Russell basically did something that you don't do even beyond the guy code of what everybody's talking about. You don't videotape anybody without somebody's consent. You don't record anybody's voice without somebody's consent. That's just life rule 101, you know. As for Nick Young, hey, man, <laughs> you you got to deal with what you got to deal with with your woman. I'm sure she's not proud of what she saw, but Nick Young, you, you're going to have to deal with that on your own. As for D'Angelo Russell, though, we talk about the locker room being one of the most sacredest places in sports, whether it's football, basketball, whatever. If I'm somebody on the team, if I'm somebody like Julius Randle, I look at the situation like, yo, I don't even trust this cat. Like, was this dude trying to videotape me, you know, while I was saying something inadvertently? Right. You know, so you, you lose trust there. And it's bad enough you're the point guard of the team. Obviously, you, you're a 20-year-old rookie, so you, you're still wet behind the ears. You're still immature. But as the point guard, you are the leader of 
the team, your leader of the offense. This is not good for D'Angelo Russell. Not not good at all. And I'm interested to hear your take on it because this is uh, uh, man, it's so, crazy. First and foremost, he got to go. He got to go. I mean, I'm sure a lot of I'm you know I'm sure y'all done heard this part of the story. I mean, all this take on it a million times. But I, I feel like as a as men, we all have kind of this unified front and this unified opinion of what what is and what shouldn't be. You can't fucking I use myself an example. If I'm married, uh, you know, which I'm not, but I, I, you know, I was, you know, I'm not married. If I'm married and I'm cheating on my wife, and you see I'm cheating on my wife, Trey, my, you know, you my nigga, we've right. been friends for up ten years. You see me cheating. You know my wife. You cool with my wife, right? You know what I'm saying? Y'all, you know, y'all have a, a relationship that's based on me and my wife's relationship. But at no time, and I mean no time, is there ever a situation where you come to her and be like, yo, you know, you you know, Maestro cheating. No. It can't happen. No. It's just, got, it's just cold. If you didn't know me, you can't, you still wouldn't go to your, to the chick that you try, if you, let's say, they're totally theoretical. Trey is married. This is totally theoretical. If Trey was trying to holler at my wife, you don't do no greaseball shit like, hey, nigga, f- fuck, fuck your man anyway. He cheating. Yeah, hey, what like, kind of yeah, like don't yeah. don't pull that don't pull that LL Cool J. Hey, lover type. Yeah, like get the fuck approach, out of here with that. You know what I'm saying? Shit. That so there's that. You you can't do it. It's unacceptable. Um, there has been rumors going around. I don't know. How or how these rumors started or why? There's rumors that the video got leaked because of Nicki Minaj. Yeah, I heard that. I, I heard about that. I, I I don't know the specific details, and that's why I I, I was going to just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's 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 beyond my pace. I there. actually I actually heard on the radio the actual interview that took place. I think it was some place down south where somebody was explaining the situation, and then. You know, it was just, I guess it was up to us fans to really dissect for yeah, ourselves. Yeah, see, I, I feel like that was one of those rumors that somebody just had to throw in there because sure, sure. Nicki Minaj and Iggy Azalea have kind of had this kind of back and forth. You sure. know, it was like a subtle back and forth or whatever. Sure. So there's that. I'm just leave that where that is. So what do you think about what Stephen A had to say about him potentially being traded for Jaleel Okafor? Here's the thing. I didn't hear that, so I'm glad you brought that up. But I didn't hear that. I'm not so sure. See, here's the thing. D'Angelo Russell did this when he's not popping. He's scoring like 13, 13 a game, maybe like right. three or four assists a game. Like, he's not popping. Right. He's young. And in your first year in the NBA, nobody can trust you. He can go. He's going to go to Philadelphia in another fucked up locker room. And niggas didn't heard what didn't happen. Niggas not gonna trust him then. Anywhere, if he goes anywhere, you know, cats ain't gonna trust. He's him gonna anywhere. have to deal with that. He's gonna have to deal with wherever that. he goes. I'm just concerned. Is anybody gonna want to fuck with him if they do decide? Hey, this is what we need to be. You know, he needs to be. Trained. Oh sure, sure. Here's no. the other piece. Nick Young is dating Iggy Azalea, and I don't know if y'all have noticed Iggy Azalea is bad than a motherfucker. I don't know if anybody noticed it. She I in my eyes. She's all right. I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. Anyway, Iggy is tell you bad than a motherfucker. And, nigga, you done broke up my happy home, and ain't nobody put hands on this nigga yet? <laughs> you telling me? The goons ain't come out yet. No, I'm not even talking about goons. Nick Young ain't put hands on this nigga yet? Nigga ain't came into the locker room, you know, fucked up, black eyes, something, he ain't been suspended. Doesn't, doesn't that send a message, though? Subliminally, I, what message? What what'd the, you the message that Nick Young probably doesn't care. <laughs> like, yeah, like I could, you know, I could beat him up, but you know, in his mind, it's either what good is that going to do? One or two, you know what? This is really maybe I just wanted to get this out. I would maybe, love to know what the conversation was after the. I would too. I, I would. I would too. I would too. I'm gonna tell you something good. I, I might have let it slide that night. I'm going to keep it a buck. 
I might have let it slide that night. Because I'd have been like, hey, look, my man, that was some bam ass shit. And I swear to the Lord, if somebody else see this fucking video, I'm going to fuck your bitch ass up. Like, that's how the conversation would have went had I be Nick Young. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm a... F- Russell, that's I'm a true. fuck That's you. anybody's Dog, initial reaction. I'm going... Hey, this video, like, all right, hi, hi, you were trying to play a prank, whatever, cool, cool. Right. But if this motherfucker gets somewhere, I'm a beat your ass. But see, here's the other thing. Thinking about it again, mm-hmm. I might have had to beat his ass off rip because, see, social media... That shit could have been going live. You could have been periscoping. You could have been fucking sure. Instagramming. Sure. You could have been you streaming. All types of shit. That shit could have been. This nigga could have real live been on the internet admitting live he cheated on his girl or he was going to or who he was trying to. Right. Or whatever, whatever. That could have been real live going live online. Yep. And he wouldn't have known until ha ha. Until it broke out. Yeah. Until, you know, the word got out. Yeah, I had to put hands on him. They'd have had to, it 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 had been some some chair moving around in that motherfucker, cause in that hotel room, and niggas would have, had, and I don't know who could hear or what, right? But it had to been some chair moving, bro, cause you 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 fucking up a happy home, bro. That it they says. Nick Young and Iggy Azalea been together for a, a, been a nice little for a while. stint. Yeah, they been together for a yeah. nice little stint. All right, we would love to say, you know, the obvious thing is he should have been faithful, mm-hmm. but fuck. Yeah, you know he wasn't faithful, and if she wouldn't have found out, it wouldn't have hurt. And it, and it sounds to me like Nick Young doesn't care, based on what you said. And I think you make a great point that all this, you know what? I forgive him, blah blah blah. Just off the, I mean, just off fair. the break, and just imagine, off the break. Imagine your wife found out on the internet, right, that you was cheating on her, mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying. I was the reason why. You, they, they found out. Sure, not nah, bruh. I agree with you. We, 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 it, 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 been we had shooting the fan one. We'd have been it, shooting the fan one. Point blank it's, and period. No doubt about it. Yeah. So but it, but it, but it, to me, it says something about Nick Young. The fact that maybe that didn't go on. I think it, it says something about these new niggas in general. It, well, it, it, it's possible. It's definitely possible. But I, I, I agree with your point. I think Gigi Azalea is probably like, yo, like. This dude didn't put hands on this dude yet? Like, well, seriously? Iggy Azalea, if you're looking for a not-so-rich man on a come-up who got dreams and ambitions... But she's not looking for a, a not-rich guy yet. I, you don't know what she's looking for. You don't know what she's looking for? If you're looking for a not-rich, you know what I'm saying, not-in-shape, ambitious young man with long hair, I could produce some of your records uh, at Maestro Styles. Iggy looking for some guap, though. Um, I ain't, she looking for bread, man. I don't know. She might. She <laughs> might. She might look back to to DC and see, you know, a cool, you know, a cool nigga that could chill and you know rub your feet after a long day. I heard she got she got a new single out. I heard she out here posing topless for video. I mean, for photo shoots and shit. Right, like, right. you know what I'm saying? At Maestro Styles, Iggy. Hey, to get to the um basketball part of this about the thing I was telling you, what Stephen A. said about yeah. the trade. Uh huh. It makes sense a little bit from a basketball standpoint. Because remember, Jaleel Okafor didn't want to go to Philadelphia yeah. because of what the Sixers, Sixers are. are yeah. He wanted to go to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I think I for mean, both parties. I mean, shit, who, who are the Lakers at this point? Uh, well, well, yeah, but uh, it's yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, it's like Stephen A. always says, you know, L.A. is, yeah. you know, nice weather and mm-hmm. nice women and all that stuff. But... It, it kind of makes sense from a basketball standpoint if the Lakers don't want to deal with the circus, which I think is no longer a circus from a media standpoint, but definitely in a locker room and on the court, you're going to definitely still have people wondering if D'Angelo Russell is t- trustworthy at this point. Mm-hmm. For the Sixers, they need a point guard. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know. I, mean, Ish- I mean, Ish Smith is not bad. I, I-, I take that back. I mean, Ish Smith be, is not that bad. He'd be bad. coming off the bench anyway if Ish Smith is, yeah. you know. So, I mean, yeah. They yeah, D'Angelo yeah. Russell off the bench, sure. I, I, I think it's interesting. And if he's getting him 13 points, because is he starting? Is D'Angelo Russell starting now? Yes, he is. Okay, he all is. Right, all right. I, I, But I, I think it's interesting because you, you're dealing with the number two pick in a draft. So, it's kind of a situation where it's like, man, man. we drafted this guy to be a sort of the face. But instead, he's a snitch. He, yeah. 
Yeah, man. Snitches get stitches, and man. He's young, man. I mean, I, I mean, but here's the thing, man. You're not going. You're not gonna keep putting this young card, L.A. Lakers. Right, right. You're not gonna keep putting this young card. You ain't gotta be. You ain't gotta be old to know that snitching or or, or letting shit like that get out is some bullshit. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, yeah, that that that's some bullshit. Yeah, for real. Hey, I I got to say something about uh, Jeff Teague, the point guard for the Atlanta Hawks. And I'm sure the SME listening audience would appreciate this because most of you guys live in the Atlanta area here. I was watching the Cavs and the Hawks um, Friday night and got a chance to look at some highlights of the game. And obviously, this was sort of the rematch to the Eastern Conference Finals from last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to myself, if I'm somebody in that Hawks front office – or just somebody on the team for that matter, I'm saying to myself, yo, we got to beat this team before the game. We, we got to beat this team because we we got to send a message. I'm sure, that's, I'm sure yeah. that was it. You know, we, they swept us last year. You know, our guys went out early in the series. We got to send a message that we here, we coming. We the number three seed right now. We, we're not going nowhere. We got to make a statement and beat this team, period. So... The end of regulation, and obviously this this game went to overtime. Here's where I'm disappointed in Jeff Teague at. And I and I said this to you last year. We didn't do the show yet, but I was saying to you that anytime you have a team like this where there's a bunch of guys that do a lot of things very well and there's no really go-to guy, mm-hmm. usually in a situation where you want the ball and the guy's hands usually it's the point guard you want the point guard to have the ball in the last seconds of a game and make a you know a quick you know game winning shot yeah jeff teague is the point guard for this team he's not elite he's i think he's good enough he's fast he's you know he's he's been a pretty good solid point guard his entire career but what had me disturbed about him in this game two 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 situations one at the end of regulation. So with six seconds left on the clock and the game is tied. And Jeff T takes the ball and just basically goes around the top of the key very gingerly. Like like his 24 seconds left. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, you, you got to get a shot off. So he turns the ball over. He tries to dribble between two defenders. And boom, we go to overtime. Alright, so... Overtime comes and obviously the Cavs take a they take a two point lead in the game. Yeah. And it's roughly I don't remember what the seconds were left, but it's about twelve seconds maybe on the clock. And again, another situation where you gotta inbound the ball and you need your best one of your best guys and make you know, make a game winning shot. Right. So here we go. Jeff Teague with the ball and He's about to get a little bit double teamed a bit. It, it it looked like two guys was coming at him, but it, it it really they were just trying to single team the guy. So he makes the dumbest decision, and Al Horford just happens to be outside the three point arc. He dishes it off to Horford, and Horford shoots the three, and he misses. Game over. I thought those were two moments where he just shrunk, man. I mean. <laughs> Tell you something good, man. and and again, he's not elite, but come on, man, you you you. I mean, you you you, 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 you the guy, you the you, but but in that you you're saying he is based on what the perception of guards are in the NBA because it's a guard driven league. Well, but, not only that, but you got swept out of the Eastern Conference Finals by this nothing, team last year. That ain't year. got nothing to do with something's got to something's got to come inside of you that tells you look. No, it this don't. team, yes, it does. No, yes, no, no. Yes, if yes, you that does. guy, it does. Yeah. But Jeff Teague ain't that guy on that on this particular team. No, period. He's not that guy. No, I'm saying, for, I'm saying for this particular team, when there's no go to guy, there's no LeBron, there's no Chris guy. Paul, there's They've no never been that. I, I, I understand that, but in the la- in this situation, in two minutes, in the last seconds of the game, 
Who's I mean, who on the Hawks they is going to take the shot? They run their offense, and whoever gets the open shot shoots. Man, man, bump on that. But look. that's what happens. That's I, why I told you this has been happening for two or three years where the Hawks have been a good team. And I say every year they're not going nowhere because they don't have a go-to guy. Okay. Nobody's going to step up. That's the problem. That's why when Joe Johnson left, right. the go-to, whoever the go-to guy was supposed to be, nobody stepped up. They don't have nobody on that roster that has the no, I, talent or ability I, I get or that. know-how to be the go-to guy. And that's what happens. They count on their offense winning games for them. And I, that's cool for the regular season. But as we know, the playoffs ain't just about running good plays. I I, I, I get all that. But, again... That ain't Jeff Teague's fault. Uh, Jeff Teague was never that guy. But, yeah, but if you if this team wants to win a title... And They're look, not winning a realistically, title. Realistically, look... You and I know, realistically, they're not winning the title. I'm just talking about the folks in that organization, on that team, on that coaching staff. They, they, they. I'm sorry, you can't, you can't lose this game. You cannot lose this game. This is a, this is a statement. They game. can't lose this game if they have expectations of being in it in the end. But the reality of the situation is, I think that we both looked at these team, this team, and realized that they have no expectations of going to the finals. And there's nothing. There's the why they don't have, they don't have expectations. Wait, they, we don't have expectations. No, no, no. I don't think they have realistic. Okay, if they have realistic expectations, then they're going about it wrong. And they had to know they've been going about it wrong because they've been losing in clutch series for the past two or three years. So it's. You got to realize, okay, okay, the first year you lose in the, in the, in the playoffs, uh, I think they was in the semifinals two years ago, all right. Next year, you make it to the semifinals. And get Number one seed. And get swept. The, but doesn't that, doesn't, shouldn't that resonate with you at some point? Like, when, sure, like, it like hurts the, them, but it, it not, hurt. Shouldn't that hurt you? You go into next season, this season we're talking about. You got to understand, it, you got to understand order here. You got to understand roles. They play their roles well, which is which is fine. So you you which asking, is fine. you asking Jeff Teague to step out his role to do that, and that's not who he is. That's not how they got this far. Okay, we, what the Hawks need to do is stop picking up people like Tiago Splitter and and uh, 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 the dude from Toronto. Uh, who they pick up the? Um, actually, they sent somebody to Toronto. They sent Damari Carroll to, to Toronto. Yeah, Toronto. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. They need to. They need to get somebody big, and the problem is, is that no big name. And, that, and that's what I was saying. The difference in that series last year was that they was getting beat on the offensive. So glass. how are you gonna be mad at? No, well, no, but yeah, that might be statistically what the issue was. No, that was the issue. Okay, it was clear as day. Tristan okay. Thompson was getting off in that. But I'm series. talking. But I'm talking about the guy who's making baskets, and and I get rebounds have something to do with making baskets. But the problem is, is that they're not going to beat. Cleveland, if they don't have somebody to uh, balance um, LeBron need, James, they need to, they they need, they need, need a guys. star. They need they need a star. I, I, yeah, they need a star. But we knew that that wasn't going to be realistic for this team in the off well, season. What them getting a star? Them getting a, it, it was unrealistic. Why? Why? Who was out there? In terms they of, in terms of, I, don't, a star? I mean, to be honest, I don't remember. But they, yeah, there was nobody. <laughs> well, the problem, is, well, <laughs> there was nobody. They could, they, they need to do something better. I mean, they, they can't I unless mean, they trade for somebody, which is possible. That you that, can't say a, it's not possible. But I'm saying in free agency, it, it wasn't happening. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, they don't have no go, no go to guy in Atlanta, and they haven't since they've been good. They don't, but and that's the problem. If sure. you can if you don't got nobody that's going to step up when it's time to step up, then you you can you're putting your whole championship uh, potential on the system, and that's cool. But I think in basketball, there's always a situation where you got to throw X's and O's out the window and say, hey. Win us this game, and and that's and that's my whole point is like that's not well, Jeff T. I I get it. I get that's not him, but at least get a shot off. At least get a shot off. He didn't get a shot off in those two situations. I mean, it it it, it just was. I'm like, dude. I'm like, dude. I know you're not that guy. I know you. But not you that asked guy. him to you get a leap. But you asked him to get a shot off because that's what a good clutch ball player would do. What I'm telling you is, is that you can't expect somebody who don't have it in them 
to just do it because they know that's what's supposed and, to be And maybe done. that's what it is. Maybe yeah. he he just don't have it in him at this that's point. That's what I've been saying from the start and, of this and after, it, But it, it, to me, it's just it's something about learning from mistakes, learning from what you've been through previous years, whatever, and just carrying it on to the following season. And it just seemed like this Hawks team, despite their positioning in the conference, it just seems like because they haven't the learned. They have a good system, and more times than that, a good system will beat teams. Sure, but in a seven-game series, I'm just it's saying, not good period. enough. Well, in a seven in a seven-game series against the upper echelon of the league, that's not good against enough. a guy against a team that has against, that go-to guy. Yeah, against it's against a LeBron James, against a Steph Curry, against a Kevin Durant, yep. against a, a Chris Paul, Westbrook, a Westbrook, against a Chris Paul, against somebody that's going to be like, hey, I'm about to take this game over because we about to lose, and and that's why I'm disappointed because Jeff Teague, while we know he's not that guy didn't assert himself in those two moments to do that. Jeff T. And it's just going to be the same old, same, and, it, and it's just going to be the same old, same old, if they somehow meet in the conference finals again, which because is very possible. Not that dude. It's going to be the same thing. I'm not disappointed in him because that's who he is, and that's, that's just who he is. You can't be disappointed in somebody for being who they are. And again, it's, it's something about a player that has that assassination in them, that, like yo, that get it. Like yo, I'm gonna get this. That ain't him. He just, he just. He's a good point guard. Hey, hey. I mean, hey. hell, I, I put Mike Conley in that kind of in that category. Mike Conley ain't that ain't ain't that dude. But Mike Conley he ain't scared to take the shot. I've seen Mike Conley take some shots. I'm sure, you've seen Jeff T take some shots before. Yeah, he just didn't take it this time. I thought this was a critical time though, just based on what happened last year, going into this year, and the team you're playing. I just thought that this was a moment. This was his moment, and he, and he didn't come through. Man. Hey, shout out to um, Shaq, AI, and Yao Ming. Congratulations on getting into the Basketball Hall of yes, Fame. Sir. Yes, sir. I don't know when they're going to do all the ceremonial stuff and all that, but all three of those brothers are definitely most deserving of it. Yeah. I, mean, I, hate, I hated the way their careers kind of ended, though. Well... See, Yao Ming, as great as he was, he never, I don't feel like he ever really had a chance. Why well, deserving of the Hall of Fame? Don't, let me get that out of the way. Yeah. Deserving of the Hall of Fame. I don't, ever, I don't feel like he had, between all the injuries he's had in his career, I don't think he ever really had a, 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 enough time to really be a dominant. Sure. You know what I'm the saying? The injuries held him back, yeah. no doubt. But definitely deserving nonetheless. So, the, you know, there's that. I mean, what is to say, what else is there to say about Shaq? Um, oh yeah, I mean, except I I hated him when Phoenix, he was in the South Phoenix, Celtics, the Celtics, Cavaliers. He couldn't run, man. I mean, it, I forgot about the Cavs yeah, that one year. You know, so there's that. I mean, and even and even, but see, the thing about AI is AI was still scoring when uh, even when he went to Denver. Yeah, well, well past Denver when he went to the Pistons, he was still you know holding right. it down. So right, I mean, right. he was still doing. I mean, maybe not so much on the defensive end, but if you needed points, he could get you points. He'd get you points, yeah, so, definitely. So, you know, but shout definitely. out to them. So, I, I think Allen Iverson went out cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, it, it could have been better. It, I mean, he, but... He, he could have went out a little I, better. No, I think, I think he went out bad, per se, is because he got beat out by a younger Rodney Stuckey. I mean, you can't that, really... Yeah, that... You can't really... And there was always that... Because I'll put it to you like this. When he went to Denver, when he got traded to Denver from Philly, and you had Melo on the team, J.R. Smith, and those Nuggets teams that went to the postseason every year, who would you say was the best player on them Nuggets teams at the time while AI was there? Would you would you say it was Melo at the time, or would you say no, still AI? I would say it was still AI, but... Unfortunately, you know, Carmelo, again, Carmelo was the younger guy. He, he was the more athletic guy. Yep. I mean, but he was young. He was, you know what I'm saying? They was, so even while, you know, AI was there and he was the more consistent, you know, move the offense, score points player. Right. Carmelo was the star because he was the young guy, fresh yep. off the championship. Um, you know, the, the college championship in Syracuse. He was, I mean, he was fresh. Right. And, and we knew, I mean, we knew, or at least we think we knew, 
who was going to be the better player eventually. Right, right. And, you know, obviously that eventually so happened. AI taking a back seat was a no-no for AI But in see, I eyes. don't want to say he took a back seat. I mean, he was still starting. Right. He was still averaging 27, 28 points a game. Um, I, I don't want to say they, that he took a step back. It was just more... Again, we knew who. Right. It's kind of like the Dwayne right. Wade, LeBron James situation, and mm-hmm. it kind of. It was like, all right, we kind of know who the budding star, but we know who team it is right now. Yep. It was Dwayne Wade's team, you know, until you know Le- LeBron came to power. Yep. Same situation. It was a- AI's team, but we kind of knew what was going to happen. In sure. The, in, in the future, sure. based on who Carmelo Anthony was. So I, I mean, we had like some better playoff wins and. You know, in some Denver. more playoff appearances, right? Of course. You know, in Denver and things of that nature. But yep. nah, yep. I, I, I'm, I'm cool with the way AI went out. Yeah, un, un, I mean, I, I thought it was a little unfortunate the way he went out, but I always knew that he was deservantly, no oh, question, yeah. a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just the stuff he did in Philly alone. Like, yeah, even if, if he stopped, reti- yeah, even if he retired, even in Philly that year, shit. even if he was some shit in Denver. Yeah, he still been a hard fight. Yeah, yeah, there's no question about it. Um, the MVP year, 2001, when yeah. it was just him and a bunch of it was him and Cool in the gang, basically well, nah, taking him to the finals. The Kimba Mutombo, I mean, he played defense. Tyrone Hill and yeah, I mean, I mean, Eric had, Snow. They had, they had, I mean, they had offense, and then they had four solid. I mean, not even just four. Because Aaron McKee off the bench, of the bench. Solid. yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. I was about to say that. They had solid that. defenders. Solid defenders, and they knew they had somebody that could score. Right. So they they made it work, man. I mean, they just didn't have a lot of offensive power. Yeah, he had a lot of a lot of offensive uh, firepower to go along with uh, AI. Um, so yeah, again, congratulations to those three guys, much deservedly so. Final four games, man. Boring to say the least. Buddy Hill, man, I I, I kind of uh, feel for him just a little bit because at halftime this game was maybe a ten point deficit. I mean, I didn't call this to be a blowout, but no, I didn't either. But I was expecting that run from Oklahoma in the second half, and Villanova just kept shooting the lights out. Well, here's the thing: I feel like you know from what I saw. They made a concerted effort to say, stop Buddy Hill. Mm-hmm. You stop Buddy Hill, you stop Oklahoma. Honestly, when we picked them last week, I picked Villanova for that reason. It was like, I Yeah, but we didn't we didn't expect the offense for Villanova to be that sure. crazy like that, that. Yeah, again, I didn't expect the blowout, but I did yeah. expect the convincing win. I think if you take out Buddy Hill, you you kind of take out Oklahoma. Right, right. The other game, I mean, not as big of a blowout, but I think we all saw it coming. Yeah, that, I think, yeah. You know, I, everybody was... tried to say, well, Syracuse going to make a run like they did against Virginia, but no, Virginia is nowhere near the caliber of North Carolina. Nah. North Carolina just got too many big guys in the front court for that to happen. So, I, North Carolina's winning it all to me yeah. in my eyes. Yeah, they play tonight against Villanova. I, I, I like Jay Wright. You know, obviously a good coach, but yeah, it's it's too much. It's pedigree at this point. They had a they had a big year. They had a really really big year. I know they were ranked number one for about five or six weeks, so they definitely did more than what I expected them. I expected them out early in the tournament, yeah. and they just kept you know winning games. So I feel like I was like maybe one of the only people that had them in the final four. You had Villanova. I the final believe four? I did. Really? Okay. I believe I did. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, no, because um, I thought you had Kansas there. That was, that was the same bracket. They were in the same bracket, right, checking it. if I remember. But It might have been another bracket I did. But, okay. Um, yeah, Kansas was the one. Villanova was a two, I think, in the same bracket. That was the that was the Elite Eight matchup, as a matter of fact. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they shut down um, Perry Ellis, I think, in that Elite Eight matchup. There's something, yeah. we, didn't, something we didn't talk about. Last week was how uh, Perry Ellis just no, couldn't do it. I have been another. You did? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. But you were high on Kansas, though. I yeah. Think. I, I thought Kansas was playing by the... They were playing the best basketball. By the Sweet 16, I believe that they had been playing the best basketball. Right, right. So, yeah, I think North Carolina takes it all. Yeah, handily. Like, not like a Oklahoma... Uh, a 40-point blowout. Yeah, no, but, you know, <laughs> I, I can see them winning by 10 to 15. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see the same. I think it's, I think the game will be in the in the seventies, but it, it's just I think Villanova can hang with them for about thirty minutes of the game, and then mm. the last ten minutes it, it, it'll be a wrap yeah, after that. Yeah, the, the the bigs for the Tar Heels are just too strong up front, man. Right. So right. So what, what you got going on over there? Well, obviously. Uh... Adrian Broner fought Ashley Theofane last Friday in, in the good old DMV area. D.C. And, Armory. Yeah, said the D.C. Armory. Shout out to RBI Boxing. They was live. They was live at the event taking pictures of Adrian Broner. Right. Was and, your boy there? Yeah, that's, that's all. That's no my doubt. man. Yeah, no he's doubt. over there taking pictures. So shout out to the homie Alejandro. You know what I'm saying? RBIboxing.com. He was over there, uh, you know, taking pictures of Adrian Broner, Floyd Mayweather, of course, you know, caught a little audio. Well, you know, he was out there doing doing this no thing. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to him because he's been putting in work for a minute. Broner beat Theophane in the ninth handedly. It was a uh, knockout, whatever. Right, right. You know, they had been beefing Floyd Mayweather and uh, Broner. They've been, you know, kind of going back and forth with, the, you know, with each other through the media or whatever, whatever. Adrian Broner, if you uh, – on the Facebook, if you're checking the Facebook page, I put a clip on there of uh, Broner challenging uh, Mayweather. Like, look, okay. you know, I feel like you disrespected me. We got to fight. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put it in the ring, whatever, whatever. He showed out. You know what I'm saying? Floyd Mayweather, you know what I'm saying? Got up, acknowledged what was going on. Mm-hmm. Said it was a, you know what I'm saying? He kind of went out and was like, you know, he kind of like backtracked when they asked him about it. Like, you know, I... Right, it was April Fool's Day, and, and, you know, the nigga's a joke. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, basically, right. Basically. Um, on a legal issue, um, uh, your boy Broner got into some 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 shit. He had some stuff back home in Cincinnati. Yeah. Where he's from. Yeah, so uh, he did turn himself in today to authorities for, uh, for his little legal issues. I don't know exactly what it was, but he had some legal issues, and... Um, yeah, I think his bail is set at a hundred thousand dollars. I think, yeah. you know, from what I read. Yeah, my my thoughts on this, and particularly, I'm talking about when he called out Mayweather. It sounded good when it happened, obviously, but when you step back and really think about it, and I had to try to pull up Adrian Broner's bio and everything because yeah. I really didn't hear much about him prior to the video coming out of him okay. calling out Mayweather. So. As I'm looking through his bio, he's 26 years old. Hmm. So he's, he's, I mean, to us, he's, you know, a youngster. Obviously, he's about 14 years younger than Mayweather at this point, because Mayweather is going on 40. Yeah, so a few thoughts popped in my head. Adrian Broner is kind of late to the party in terms of trying to challenge somebody, let alone a 40-year-old to no, come out of retirement. I disagree with that. Number two... This would look good from a boxing standpoint in terms of, obviously, making some money. Yeah. And they're boys, right? Apparently. They're, well, no, no, they're, well, they're beefing now. They're beefing. They're right? beefing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Been, um, I forget when it started. I think Adrian Broner said something. He said something slick. Right. Um, Mayweather responded. He said something with, like, like one of my cars costs more than anything you earned your whole career. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, I right. guess that kind of subsided, and that got to sure. up till last Friday. You know all that happened, right? So you know, so now nah, they kind of they kind of beefing right now. Well, uh, gotta, he, called, gotta, he called he called he called the May, he said Mayweather Promotions was like Hateweather Promotions. He said okay. like, they were just saying so he was just throwing some shots. They was back throwing and shots forth. at each other, whatever, whatever. So you know, what I mean, there's I, that. I, I got a solution. For I this. I think they should fight. I mean. I get it. Floyd Mayweather ain't trying to fight no more. He he even got his guap, whatever, whatever. Um, he said he Rona said he made it very clear that if he get in the ring with him, he's not going to get the fifty wins. That's what that's what right, Rona said. Right. So so fifty wins is the record, right? To my understanding, or is, is that, that the record by who Marciano? By uh, I, yeah, I believe it is Marciano. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know. but I mean, but fifty is that number that. Floyd well, would have to get to well, that's for all-time wins, right? Or is that just a milestone that just... 
I just people think, talking about. I think it's just think that it's fifty wins, honestly, and, it, and it's a milestone. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I got a solution. But I think this. Marciano might. I think Marciano might have fifty wins. I think. Okay, but he's definitely undefeated. Okay, Here, here's my solution for both these brothers. Obviously, there's a lot of money to be made out there. Floyd Money Mayweather, you know, the money team and all that stuff. Look, from a marketing standpoint, the the opportunity to get the fifty wins. If I'm Floyd, hey. Maybe I do it one more time, just, just just to shut this kid up. Maybe I come out of retirement. We make some money, you know what I'm saying? We get the check, we fight, we go some rounds, and if I want to knock you out, I knock you out. Floyd Mayweather ain't knocking out. <laughs> we, you know, we we get paid, we get our checks, we go home. And but see, that's under the assumption. See, that's under the assumption that Floyd Mayweather want Brony to get that kind of money because. Mm-hmm. That's clearly going to be the most money Broner has ever made in a fight. Sure. And it might be the most he's ever made collectively in all his fights together. Right. That that much is 100% true. And I like the fact that he called Mayweather out just to kind of get social media going and get his name out there a little more well, than what Adrian it is Broner, now. Adrian Broner, let's get it, don't get it twisted. In the Boston world, Adrian Broner is a big deal. Sure, you know what I'm saying. Sure. So he's he's definitely a big deal in, in the boxing. But world. me as a casual boxing fan, I learned more about Adrian Broner well, because of there isn't really the video. Yeah, I get you. There isn't really you're you're like a dinosaur. There isn't really a casual boxing fan. Even you're really into UFC. I disagree mixed, with that. If either you're really into MMA or you're really into boxing in 2016, I disagree with that. I don't know nobody who. I mean. Because who's popping? Because there's there's boxers out there that people want to see just because they're familiar with the name. And it's then there's Floyd boxers. Mayweather. That's Floyd Mayweather. Well, we're learning. You only know we're, about we're, Deontay we're learning Wilder. About Wilder. Nah. We're, we're learning about We're learning about. We're lear- I said we're learning about him. But you wouldn't know nothing about. And to be honest, I wouldn't know nothing about him. Right. If, uh, but, but that's my point. Is but that's, that's not what, casual boxing fans is more so what I'm saying. Even, why is that? It's just the way. It's just the way that sport. Like there isn't a casual hockey fan. Like there isn't a because the sport. Nah, I, I disagree with that. <laughs> the sport is so. It's such on a decline. Like MMA is such a like a, right. A, like a. I disagree with that. I don't think as a casual boxing fan. I don't think if the quote unquote casual boxing fan. I don't think they could name ten hot boxers at the moment. Probably not ten. But I, you would but, think, but but but, but it, well, just to bring up your hockey example, if I'm a hockey like if I'm a diehard hockey fan, like I live, eat, breathe hockey, then I could run off about ten or twenty names of hockey players. Right. If I'm the casual hockey fan and I just watch hockey because somebody's name is out there, i.e. Ovechkin, i.e. Sidney Crosby, then that's the casual fan. There's a, there's a difference. Yeah, I think I think you should be able to name. I feel like you should be able to, as a casual fan, you should be able to at least name five boxers that are hitting. Five, like just five, because that are actually number, fighting, yeah. or just yeah, because right. of the, For instance, because of the name, because it's because of the name. Okay, who, Cotto, Canelo, Alvarez. I mean, those are names that I would like to think the casual boxing fan. Can gravitate towards. I don't think maybe they maybe not. not. I don't think so. But I, I just don't think so. But I I I believe that there are casual boxing fans, and I believe that there are fans of the sport of boxing that there need. may be people that like watching boxing. But I don't think exactly that. those are the ones that eat, breathe, and sleep boxing. No 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 no. no. I believe that there are people that don't know much about who's hitting and who's not hitting in boxing. That just like to watch it. So if they flip the channels and they see it's on, they might stop and watch it. Or if Mayweather fighting somebody, they might watch it. Or Adrian Broner fighting, they might watch it. See, the way I see it, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Boxers that are hitting. Floyd Mayweather, who's retired, obviously. Mm-hmm. Manny Pacquiao, who ain't who got this last fight against Close Tim, to retirement. Yeah. Tim Brad. Um, not Tim Brad. I'm sorry. Uh, him. Mayweather. Pacquiao. Adrian Broner. And I'm just talking about hitting. Right. Deontay Wilder, who, again, he's not even super popular. And but he's approaching the prime. He, I would say he's no, no, approaching he the prime. He may be approaching the prime. 
We don't know what's going to happen. If he gets his ass with Papa Vecchio, that well, might take him that, Well, back. That, we cross that bridge when we get yeah, there. Yeah, so I'm saying, like, he he's not even popping. So he might not cross that, right. that, you know what I'm saying? Right. And one more, Canelo Alvarez. Yeah, I mentioned him. Yeah, so, but I'm confident, a lot of people, like, again, the casual boxer fan would know about Canelo Alvarez because he fought Mayweather. They would know about Pacquiao because he, you know, the history. They know about Floyd Mayweather because of history. Mm-hmm. Um, they 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 know about Adrian Broner because of the antics when you know in, in some yep. past fights. Yep. Deontay Wilder might be to a casual boxer fan because of how he fights, right. but I'm not so sure that a lot of people um, know who he is like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, I mean, you know, like, again, casual fans, not people that go to, you know, boxing sites and to see who who's ranked where. Man. Those are the diehard boxing fans. Right. Yeah. I don't think a casual, I don't think most casual fans know who Deontay Wilder is. And I think the only reason they know about Deontay, I mean, know about Adrian Brown is because it's antics. That, yeah. And the only reason they know about Canelo Alvarez is because he's fought Mayweather. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, I get that. So again, I don't think I, there's. I feel like a casual, like for instance, when boxing was boxing, mm-hmm. Tyson, Bo, Holyfield, Foreman in his old days. Yep, Jones you know, Jr. Jo- yeah, Jones Jr. Yep, uh, Trinidad. You know, like mm-hmm. it was. You could. You could. There just, was a plethora. You could rack of off. Boxers. You could rack yeah. off names. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. You could right. rack off names. Now. I think MMA is more, MMA is like kind of trying to approach that. Yep. But the only reason I can't do it is because, truth be told, I'm not even, okay, I might be able to. Diaz, Rousey, obviously, home is hitting because she, uh, who? Silver, Silver does, Silver. no, yes. MMA? Yeah, he does Or MMA. UFC, okay. I mean, it's all mixed it's the martial same. arts. Okay, I mean, okay. It might, yeah, it's all mixed martial Shows arts. Shows how much I again, know about I'm, this stuff. Again, I'm, I am not. I am not. So any UFC diehards who know, I don't watch mixed martial arts. I mean, it's just not interesting to me. Right. It's just not. I mean, I guess everybody could watch somebody beating the shit out of somebody else, but it's just not right. interesting to me. Right. Like I'd rather. But the watch casual, boxing. but the casual UFC fan will watch it because of the. Let me name. let me say it this way: the casual sports fan is a better way of is a better way of saying it. How so? Because. If you're a casual boxing fan, right, I would think that those might be the people who pay attention when boxing pops up on ESPN. Yeah, you're you get right. what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so maybe the casual sports fan is a better way to say it than the casual boxing fan. Because I think the casual boxing fan might dig a little deeper. Like they might check out rbrboxing.com because they're a casual fan of just boxing. Yeah, I, I would say more the diehard, like the guys, like your boy A Train. He, I believe he's like well, ain't all no in. Belief about it. He's all in. He ain't no belief about <laughs> he, it. To he me, in. he's no yeah. casual yeah. No, boxing fan. Yeah, he's no, all in. Yeah, he like, yeah, that's he, his like. That's, right. He trying to do that. Like he's on the verge of doing that. That's his going to be his job. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So no, it ain't no casual yeah. shit about what what what. what we got to get him on the podcast that. one day. We man. working on it. We working on Word it. Word up. Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia had a malfunctioning situation with their escalator. It was during a Flyers game a couple days ago, and the escalator just basically just went, like, full speed backwards, and just, you, you should have saw the video. It was yeah. just people just flying down the escalator, and now they didn't report of anybody getting seriously hurt. Yeah. So, you know, thank God for that, but I, I watched the video, and... Uh, that's uh, that's throwing, a scary thing. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's, it's a scary situation yeah. there. So you know, shout out to you know the people that you know didn't get hurt and everything. And in the words of tax, be safe though. Yeah, word up, word up. Shout uh, out to Will Smith and Jada. Apparently, they uh, are getting ready to be majority owners of the Seventy Sixes. Really. That's what I. That's what okay. I read. Okay, I, great. I, yeah. I, I know Will Smith has like a piece of yeah. the ownership already. Right. So. right. So apparently they're on their way to be a majority owner. Oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Maybe he could you know turn some things around with that team. Mm. Who who knows, man? Mm. Hey, Will Smith, come play for the Seventy Sixers. You know what I'm saying? He might not have no rings, but hey, he's Will Smith. No, <laughs> you <stop> know. It, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let's get to some football. Uh, your boy Colin Kaepernick, uh, or I, I should say the Grizz's boy Colin Kaepernick, 
the Broncos are trying to work out a deal where he gets traded to the Broncos. Yeah. And it, it's funny. I know you said you thought the Broncos was done with their quarterback search, but for some reason, I just didn't think – I didn't think it would be Kaepernick, but I just didn't think that Sanchez – would be the guy for some reason. Well, um, I j- just recently looking at my phone, I was glancing at my phone while we were in some earlier segments. Um, right. Seems like they're backing out of the deal. Really? Um, yeah, they don't seem like... Um, okay, now it's because I think the Broncos want, want the Niners to pay about 4.9 4. million. 4.9 million, million, I don't think they're trying to pay that. I didn't... Um, yeah. No no official details have been released when I looked at my phone, so... Right. Um, the, it seems like that deal is dying. Like, wow. Like, that, that's, that's how they... Wrote it in the headline. Sure, that the sure, kid sure. Is dying. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not surprised that both parties haven't come to an agreement on this. I've I've said it for a few episodes. The 49ers front office is dysfunctional at this point, and it's bad enough you hired a coach that was already in a dysfunctional situation. Now you bring him in, and it seems like Kaepernick and Chip Kelly aren't. Get, well, I don't want to say they're not getting along. Well, we but don't know we, what their relationship is. We don't is, know. Yeah, but we know nothing right now. It just, again, I don't know. You know, the last time we talked about it, Chip Kelly hadn't even reached out to Kaepernick. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. You know, so it's just little stuff like that. Yeah, so your boy gets to come home, play for his hometown team. Uh, Vernon Davis signs a $2.3 million contract with the Redskins. Uh, the way I see this, and... I know the Redskins have an awesome tight end in Jordan Reed. Yeah. I also know that Jordan Reed is prone to injuries at times. Yeah. So maybe, just maybe, if some, God forbid, he gets hurt again, Vernon Davis, obviously he's going to be the number two anyway. Well, that's more so, well, I was thinking bigger than that. Mm-hmm. If Jordan Reed stays healthy, Vernon Davis is actually going to be a I think going to be a pretty good number two sure yeah um it's kind of in my mind reminiscent I mean certainly not comparable to what the Patriots are doing with Gronkowski and um (laughs) with Gronkowski and uh Montez Bennett because obviously Gronkowski is better than Reed and Bennett is better than Vernon Davis Mm -hmm. but maybe a, a a poor man's combo of that they're trying to I feel like you know what I'm saying because Vernon Davis at this point is kind of like the uh, quintessential blocking but can catch tight end. Right, right. He, that's really what he is. And Jordan Reed um, is essentially that uh, you know that receive that tight end that could play receiver. Right, kind of synonymous with what Gronkowski does. They split them out, and I know that because they did it to Steelers a few times that first game last year. They could split Gronkowski out, yep. and he could play wide receiver. Yep, yep. So it's it's kind of that. That's a big help for Kirk Cousins. Yeah, definitely. You know, definitely. Who, who likes to throw inside the numbers. So Give him an opportunity to, you know, make the Redskins, you know, pay him long term for sure. Yeah. Mm. I, you don't think it's going to happen? Um, I think they'll end up keeping Kirk Cousins. I, I'm just more so. It, it kind of irritates me. Not, I feel like they could have got a deal done instead of paying him almost $20 million with a franchise tag. Yeah, sure. Nah, I, I, I totally get it, man. Yeah. Um, he's got to prove himself. Just getting back to Vernon Davis for a minute here. I hope that he can come out of whatever funk he's in because getting to Denver was – it was a bad look. I mean, yeah, drop, and it was drop supposed catches. To, and it was supposed to be a good look. Yeah, was, I mean – I mean, it looks like – I mean, despite the fact he's got a Super Bowl ring, but, I mean, it, it's like Stephen A says he – Left his hands in San Francisco. Yeah. You know, so. And really, uh, um, you know, them last few years in San Francisco, between injury and he Injuries really, and, and, the t- and basically the whole defense retiring. Yeah, he wasn't. <laughs> he was, I mean, he wasn't good the past two years. Yeah. So. Yeah, for real. I, and I knew it was real. You know, it's funny. It was real because I hadn't noticed. I, I remember when we did our fantasy football draft last year. Uh-huh. And it got yes. all the way down to the yes. to the Mr. Irrelevant pick. Nobody, and we didn't realize that nobody had picked up nobody. Vernon Davis, and that's when I realized, like, yo, Vernon Davis has failed the fuck off. Yeah, that that's crazy. That's crazy, and and it, and it proved right. Yeah, oh yeah, it it, it proved right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were in a league of what sixteen, 16? and yeah, yeah. That and for real, quite frankly, this coming season, I don't see nobody picking them up. In uh, I, see, I can see somebody picking. I can see somebody picking them up around in that same, you know, last round type thing. 
You check out these uh, NFL.com uh, division rankings? Yeah, I picked. I, I, I looked at it vaguely. I might have put it up, man, on the iPad. Yeah, so um, NFL.com recently released these division rankings, and I don't know if they're basing it off of the offseason, they're basing it off of pedigree, or, you know, what have you, but apparently they've been doing this since uh, 2012. So mm-hmm. just to kind of read off to you what their ranking is, they got the AFC North, our division, number one, NFC West, number two, AFC West, number three, AFC East, number four, NFC North, number five, the NFC South, number six, AFC South, number seven, and NFC East, number eight. I, I, I got a big problem with these rankings, and it, it's particularly from three to eight on, on this list here. AFC North, you know, you and I know, is the toughest division in football. I mean, you got three teams, you know, winning. They're legitimate. Legitimate, you know, Super Bowl contenders, even though the Bengals don't win playoff games, but they win about 10 games a season. So they got it right with the AFC North being number one. NFC West, number two, I believe they got that right. Seahawks, dominant. You know, for the last four years, the Cardinals coming on strong. I know the Niners had an off season, but prior to that, they were under Harbaugh. But I don't know, think it's good. based on. I don't. I don't think they could really. I don't think this list is based on what happened years before. I no, sure, I, I, I get on, it. I think it's more based on what happened last year. Sure, and to the potential of what's going to happen this year. Yeah, sure. No, I, I, I get it. I, I totally get that. But number three through number eight to me, is a little out of whack. Now, I would put the NFC North number three. Now, I know the Packers have dominated the division for what seems like a four or five year stretch, but the Lions and the Vikings do play some competitive football, you know, every every, every now and then. So, I mean, it's, it's not a crummy, it's not a crummy division. No. It's just that the Packers just somehow end up on top, but it's competitive. It's competitive, so I would I would put the NFC North in number three, and I would put the AFC West number four. I I, I, w- I would put those two, you know, number three and number four. That look the AFC East at number four, they, they they're way too high. Yeah, they, they they're too high. I I actually got the AFC East number seven, because don't don't the Dolphins have been some crap. For the last 15 years. They have one playoff appearance in the last 15 years. The Bills haven't made the playoffs since 1999. The Jets, while they've had some good seasons here and there, for the most part, they're, you know, they've been a little bit mediocre. The Patriots dominate this division every year. They win it by landslides almost every year. There's, there's no way that this division should be ranked number four. I'm sorry. I, I, I just don't see that. Um, I, I got them number seven. I actually got the AFC South as the last place division. AFC South? Really? <laughs> All right. So, what, 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 yeah, what you think, man? AFC North, yeah, I got them as number one. Um, you, know, you already know how I feel about the Steelers. You already know how I feel about the Bengals. I don't know how I feel about the Ravens yet. We'll this be back. Year. We'll be back. Sure. I we'll, don't know how I feel about the Ravens we'll be right back. now this year. We'll be back. But number two, I got to go with the uh, the AFC West, man. That's legit. I got to go with the AFC That's West. That's legit. Broncos still got a good defense. They've lost pieces. Yep. I get it. They're still a good defense. You, nobody's going to convince me they're not a good defense at this point. Sure. Chiefs, good defense. Good, you Justin know, Houston's solid. injury is a Concerned, they're still but a good defense on paper. Obviously, we only got last year. Yep. I mean, again, to based on what I think they're raking this off. Yep. Last year, and you know the potential of this year. Right. Yeah, they're still a good team. The Chargers had a. The Chargers, if anybody's had an off year, they've had an off year, and it was a lot. It was based on All injuries. injuries. Yep. For the, but Philip Rivers is still there. Right. Um. There's that, and then the Raiders. The Raiders. They're up and coming. They're up but... and coming. They got a quarterback, and mm-hmm. if you got a quarterback. You got a shot. Sure, sure. So I'll go with them at number two. Uh, number three, I'm going NFC South. NFC South. 
Number Car- th- at number three? At number three, Carolina Panthers, obviously. Okay, Drew Brees and Sean Payton are coming back. Now, I know I've had my, uh, you know... The de- it's the defense of the Saints that the we really the Saints. have a beef with. Yeah, yeah, and I, but I've even picked that Sean Payton and, and uh, Drew Brees at this point. But mm-hmm. if any quarterback coach duo could turn it around, it's yes, I agree him. with that part. Um, Matt Ryan is a, is a top, you know, semi top ten quarterback. Yep. So there's that, and and Jameis like we talked about. And James is up and coming. They playing good defense. They got Doug Martin. Uh, you know, don't I like what they did with Lovey, team. but yeah, they got a good they got, team they got going. Pete, yeah. I would go with them at number three. I got them number. I got that division number five. Right? Um, I would go with the North, NFC North at four. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't think I don't got a problem with that. Um, I mean, the Vikings had a good year, and solely on more defense, and it was also more about the fact that the Packers didn't have. Uh, the best year, but I don't really know where that where the Vikings stand right now. Um, their offense, we don't know what the hell that is. Sure, um, sure. Teddy Bridgewater, we don't know what the hell that is yet. Yep. The Packers are going to continue. The Bears and the Lions, they played a few competitive games last year, but you're not about to. It I'm, would have to take the Lions to just come out of nowhere. I'm just not convinced. Just to be, just to be a believer. Yeah. If you, again, if we're talking about what they did last year. And um, if those if that's a determining factor, along with uh, on paper this year, right. they haven't done anything to make me feel like, you know, they' about to be hidden. So then I gotta go AFC East at number five. No, no, I gotta go NFC West. I'm sorry, at number five. NFC West at number five. Yeah, you got uh, me too low. I think, um, but I don't know if I buy that. Yeah, I got NFC West at number five. Rams again. We talk about is uh, what well, they did last they year. They show on up paper. for the division games. They show and up for the, everybody well, else. But I'm just talking about on, uh, what they did last year and what they look like on paper. Mm-hmm. Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley is Todd Gurley. Defense is strong. One thing you're not about to take away from the NFC West, at least on three of those teams, is that their defenses are solid. Right. Um. I don't. I, don't, I can't really speak for. Um, uh. So the Rams solid defense. Um, Seattle, and I can't speak for 49ers defense right now. I, I, I don't sure. know where the hell they at. So, then, there's that. Number six, then would be the, um, that would be the, um, the, uh, where am I at? The North? The North for what? Number six. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'd be the East for six. Because I know I got the South at eight and the East at seven. Right. Okay. Okay. Really, just it's the Patriots and and the potential of so what everybody else. the they, potential. They said that last year. Yeah, again, but that's that's all we got <laughs> to go off of. Their defense was sure. solid at some points last year, and you know. But again, I got them at six. Um, the NFC East. Uh, Tony Romo was out. That got a lot to do with. Uh, and see, here's the thing about the the NFC East. It's been bad for the last few years but it always comes down to the last week with this division yeah. almost every year and so, that's why I got them down so low I got them down so low because uh, I mean really what messes them up is each other yeah you know what I'm they saying? beat each they, other up yeah they yeah. yeah so that's really what messes them up and then the AFC South because legitimately every team on that every team on that division can be bad Mm-hmm. Yeah, every single team on that division can be. Yeah, in that they. I don't see that. how their rankings. They got this division number seven. It, it should be number eight. Well, I mean, <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> what I'm looking at, like they said, they got the seven. And again, this is a consensus, so it's not like everybody yeah, agreed sure. on this. No. So there's that. I just, I just thought it was fun to talk about because I, I noticed it and I thought it'd be a good what well, to talk they, about. What they wrote was the South. Um, they're out of the basement. The division is far more interesting because of the of the young quarterbacks. Right. That's what got. That's what has them at number seven. They didn't talk about anything about you know they're a good team or you know the Colts are good because the Colts is Andrew Luck. Right. Um, and that's which it. I which I expect the Colts to bounce back this sure. coming season. Um, I mean the Texans. I, well, the Texans. The Texans. 
They're gonna be tricky this year. They gotta get a running back. They got Lamar Miller. They got oh yeah 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 that's right. yeah they got Lamar that's Miller. Right. That's right. And I and I think that's I think that's gonna be good. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, we'll I think see. that's gonna be good. We'll see. I I, th- I think the Texans will get better though. I think yeah. they I think they could they could win ten games. They could win the division. To be honest with you. Yeah no that's true. They I, play solid defense. Yeah. And they got some offensive DeAndre Hopkins, Brock Osweiler. All right, he's not gonna be. Doesn't this remind you? This this is remind you of like. Matt Schaub, like, doesn't this... Nah. I mean, I'm saying with, like, remember years ago, the Texans got Matt Schaub out of free agency, and then they kind of, you know, well, took they were, off. Yeah, they were good. This, this, yeah. this, 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 this sounds like Matt Schaub 2.0. Um, I hope not. Because they haven't... De- well, I'm not saying in terms of what Matt Schaub is right now. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying... He was actually a good quarterback. He was good. Point. He was good for yeah, the Texans yeah. in those first five, six seasons. Yeah. But this sounds like... With Brock Osweiler, this sounds like this is Matt Schaub 2.0. Well, I don't he'll wanna, be good for five or six seasons. That on, I don't want to put that on uh, Osweiler. Sure, I don't want to wish it on him or yeah. anything. But. but they got, again, they got a solid defense. I mean, J.J. Watt, J.J. Watt still is J.J. Watt. Yep. Bama had injuries, apparently, mm-hmm. all, all year. I'm not a Jadavion Clowney believer. Well, like, and you don't have a reason to be yet, but... There's, I mean, there's that possibility. That there's still some something. upside, but yeah, cause I'm just, I mean, because he's still kind of young. Yeah, so, he is, and he, he is. hasn't really got a whole bunch of burn either. Right, right, right. So yeah, they'd be, um, they'd be number eight for me, but they got him at number seven. They got the East at eight. In the comments, they wrote, "It's possible the division was punished slightly by the voters for exposing us too much to mediocre football on national television." Which and is they the said, truth. Exactly. Which is the truth. But that, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're worse than the AFC South. And again, I just don't believe that they're worse than the AFC South. Oh, yeah, I don't either. I that's why I, that's why I had the AFC South like you did, number eight. Yeah. Because I, I, I think everybody else, Cause Jacksonville, they have, Tennessee, I, I just don't see Well, because the, the it. Texans could be good, but it, there's just as much as a possibility he could that be they bad. they could be bad. Because it's on Brock Osweiler. The same with the Colts. They could yeah. be good, but you never know with right. this team. They could be bad as well. So yeah, like I said, from three to eight, I'm I'm in a totally different direction. It looks like you from two to seven, you're kind of in a different direction. Yeah. Well, no, two through seven because you no yeah yeah two through seven two through yeah two through I seven. Oh, when I, I yeah I could have I could have shifted all that around. I, I'm I'm with the north again. I mean I'm going to ring the Stiller bell real quick. Stiller's nation hashtag Stiller's nation. What up though? Le'Veon Bell hasn't got to play a whole season because of Vontaze Burfitt. Um, I mean, I know we got the whole Montavious Bryant thing looming. I, I think we got enough firepower to look past that. Right. Darius Green is a great pickup. Uh, the defense is growing. Um, I, I'm I'm really hoping we do the right thing in the draft and get cornerbacks or secondary. And if we do that well, we'll we'll be all right, man. Yeah. Their comments here: the expected resurgence of the Ravens give the division three legitimate contenders, not to mention three bona fide human starting quarterbacks. And it also says the schedule won't help the Browns. Hey, right. true about that. <laughs> and we had the NFC East this year, so yeah, NFC East and I AFC, AFC East. East. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. so and, I mean, outside of the Patriots, you know, we for, I ain't gonna say much gimmies, but you know, some some games. If it'll be some games, I'm only speaking to Pittsburgh. If we mm-hmm. do what we supposed to do. We should Giants. Yeah. Got the potential to be good, but they also yeah. got the potential to, be, to bad. be bad. I mean, because they got so many pieces on that defense, and they did it right this yeah, offseason. Yeah. I give them an A plus they on everything. Yeah, they yeah, did. yeah. It's, it's, it's just about chemistry yeah. for the defense at yeah. this point. And who's coaching the defense? Is it still uh, Spags? Yeah, okay. He's still coaching the defense up. So that for me, it's about can they come together in enough time to maybe push for a playoff spot? So yeah, I, I got nothing else on this list here. You you good? I'm good with that. I'm good with that, man. I bet. My Ravens. Got oh, a couple yeah. got a couple stories I here. All about your your Ravens. Got a couple stories here. So, you know, I live in the Baltimore area and I get a lot of news reports on Facebook and everything like that. So the first one I get, and this is from Channel thirteen in Baltimore, the CBS affiliate. There's a story about the uh, Terrell Suggs. And we talked about Terrell Suggs and his DUI a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And we said that there was the potential that he could face jail time. And we also said that 
for something as small as this, no way. I mean, just pay the fine, get out of court, and just, you know, do your thing. The, the fact that this is resurfacing again makes me wonder. And by the way, he pleaded not guilty in court, which to me, if you, if you know better than me, Maestro, I don't know how you can claim not guilty on <laughs> driving without a suspended <laughs> license. And you ran into the shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, you know something that I don't know? I, no, nah, he ran into the shit. Yeah. I, I'm not sure <laughs> how that could be, you know, discredited. Um, it's, you know, like, I feel like somebody saw him run into the shit. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I, I, that, I, that part I do not get whatsoever. But if, 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 if you're telling me that he's going to potentially spend six months in prison for this small little fracture here, you, 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 you gotta cut him. You you, you gotta cut him at, at this point because... You know, like it's it's like I talked about. It 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 brings the Ravens bad press, and it's it's to one of your biggest stars on the team, Terrell Suggs. And again, this should just be it to me. It should just be sort of a non-story at this point. It's a DUI. He drove without a license. It should just be a fine. Well, why does it have to revert to jail time at this point? Yeah, you know. I don't know, man. If if I'm Bashadi and Nazi, you, you you just gotta cut ties at some point. It's like, look, yeah, th- thank you. Get that real. Yeah, th- I mean, thank you for 13 seasons of you know great Easily football. Easily the second best linebacker to ever play uh, Ravens, Ravens football. football. You know, thank you for that. You're gonna be in a ring of honor, but bruh, we we we, we can't put up with this stuff, man. It, it, you know, we you, you, you gotta go. Get aging. And you, you, you're coming off an Achilles injury. Right. And we don't even know if you're really going to come back and be that same guy. If they cut him, man, I, I, I wouldn't be disappointed at all at this point. Yeah. I mean, th- this should not be... Uh, two reports should not come out on this type of story. I mean, let, yeah. I mean, let, let alone you pleading not guilty to driving without a license. Bruh. <laughs> you, you, you got proof that... Your license was valid. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? It was hey, good. It hey, was good. It's the Ravens' way, man. No, no, it's not the Ravens' way. <laughs> don't, don't, don't That's do that. The Ravens' way. Don't, y'all. don't do that, homie. How don't... many times they've done some old retarded? How many times the players have done retarded shit like this, man? How many times they got to do retarded shit like this, man? I don't know, but they, he got to, he got to go. I'm sorry, he got to go. If he do, if he do jail time, if he do jail time, he got to go. It's that. It's just that simple for me right now. Here's the other story that I'm a little ticked off about, and I'm and I'm I'm more ticked off at Channel 13 for this because. Oh, don't you dare be mad at the news for doing their goddamn job. No, no, I'm 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 a little upset about this because, first of all, and people that don't know, we're 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 talking about Troy Smith, who was who was. In the NFL, very briefly, before uh, I don't know somebody didn't want to pick him up, but so there's some audio. You you sent me the audio, Maestro, where he gets pulled over by the cops, and he told the cop that he's got a degree in bachelor. Right? Is is that that was the term? You right? Know, he, he said he got a. Is that what he said? I thought he yeah. Said he got a bachelor's in degrees. Well, he got a degree in bachelor's. That's a degree in bachelor's. That's exactly, <laughs> that was exactly his <laughs> they said, words. <laughs> they said, uh, the Bama, the Bama, the, the, them boys asked him, uh, yeah, can you say the alphabet from C to W? And he said, uh, no, nah, I could definitely say the alphabet from A to Z. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. Yeah, he so, was on one. Yeah, yeah. He, he was definitely on one. But So he, he's getting charged with a DUI. As well as marijuana possession, because the cops found it in his car and all that stuff. And, um, oh, here was the other quote he said. He says, um, I'm officer. Oh, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, like he, he said was... he's an officer. He was like, what? <laughs> you an officer? And he, and he went back on that shit real quick. Like, nah, yeah. I ain't that fucked up. He was like, nah, nah, I'm not an officer, but I'm an officer. So, and of course, you know, with these athletes, they always try to play this. 
you know who I am game. Like, you know me. Like, nigga, nah, like, nigga, nigga, nigga we don't know you. You, you Troy Smith. You, you've you been irrelevant for six, seven years now. Did and, when you, and when you were in the NFL... You yeah. were still irrelevant. Yeah, so, saying, so, so come on, man. And and he was a nigga in Oklahoma, though. I ain't, yeah, he was definitely Ohio State. Nigga, Ohio State. I'm sorry. He yeah. was definitely a nigga then, but yeah, yeah. But let, let me. Oh, Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah. By the way, but right. I'm upset at Channel 13 here for this. You put out, you put out a statement, or you put out the title of your report. Ex Ravens quarterback charged with. DUI, arrested for DUI. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Let's let's back up for a minute. Troy Smith has not been with the Ravens since six, seven what, years ago. What the fuck that mean? He, he ain't an ex-Raven no more? Huh? He ain't an ex-Raven no more? Okay, he's an ex-Raven, but he's an ex-Raven. Bruh, I, I can guarantee you that <laughs> there's people in Baltimore that forgot about Troy Smith. That's fine. Like, like oh. I, I forgot this dude even was on the team. He's still an ex-Raven. You know, but but that, that's not only the reason why I'm upset at Channel 13. Again, it's like I've been talking about all this time with these off-season issues with even current players on the Ravens. It gives the Ravens bad press. Just the fact that you throw the name in there. And, and he hasn't been with the team since 2000. 10 or something, you know, crazy like that. Six years ago. He hasn't been with the, he played with the, didn't he play with the Niners one season under Singletary? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and him and Singletary was going back yeah. and forth at each other. I don't remember that, but yeah, yeah I, 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 he went I, to the 49ers. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember a game against the Rams, I think, mm-hmm. and they was on the sideline, and him and Singletary was just jawing back at each other. Mm-hmm. And I think this was before, um, they fired him, and I think they made somebody the interim. Mm-hmm. It, I think it was 2010. Yeah, it, it was 2010 because Harbaugh came in 2011. Right. So yeah, they they was they was just drawing back at each other back and forth. Hey man, shout out to the ex Ravens, man. Y'all y'all niggas putting in work. Yeah. Man. Who, who who we talk about last week? Uh, who? We talked about last week, ex Raven with the dog fighting. Um, oh, Terrence Cody. Terrence Cody. Well, Shout he out. was he was, but see, he was a more recent Raven. It don't matter. It does like, matter. If, it does. It does if matter. If Franco Harris, if Franco Harris got into some shit, the headline would say ex Steeler Franco Harris was in some shit. I don't know if it would say ex Steeler. I'm sure it, it would probably say. would say former NFL player. Franco if Yancey Harris. Thig, if Yancey Thigpen got into some shit. Who? And Pitt, yeah, exactly. If Yancey Thigpen, ex Steelers wide receiver, got into some shit, okay, and he was in, he was booming in like '92. Okay, they would say ex Steeler Yancey Thigpen because he was known as a Steeler. It would be more former NFL player Yancey, whoever you just said. Hey, but, but, nah, it, but nah. this is the but this is the local nah, nah. this is the local affiliate which makes 20, which makes people and, and, and i get it i get it you the local affiliate but but if you're the local and it's clickbait sure but why would you if i'm the ravens i look at they this gotta like, eat it uh, sure they're gonna eat it they got to they ain't they're, nothing they're, they can do about they're, it they're gonna eat it they ain't nothing they can do about but, it but that don't mean oh we're okay with it they're, they're okay with it <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm, 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 I'm sit back and just be like oh Oh, one of our former players got arrested. Oh, yeah, okay. Ain't got nothing to do cool. With them. But you throwing the Raven name in there, and all you're gonna hear is, "Up oh, well, here goes Raven players. Stop here drafting. they go. Hey, stop drafting <laughs> motherfuckers that can't get, get, keep out of trouble. How about that? Well, I mean, there's a lot. You can say that for a lot of teams. Hey, we ain't talking about other teams. <laughs> you right can, you, you, we we can ain't talking about other teams. We can say that right for now. a lot of teams. But that, but Lord knows point. the Bengals that's had my... their issues. And every time it said ex Bengal. <laughs> we, well. It said ex Bengal. For some players, yes. It was ex Bengal. I promise you a, a strong majority of it said if it was a re- But if they were a recent ex Bengal, yes. But if you're talking about Anthony Munoz. This, when he was in his shit, when they was revealing he was gay or whatever, it said ex bangle. When he, when he was revealing he was gay? Yeah, you know he I, gay. I thought, I thought you were going to say when he got locked up or something. Which no, I no, know no, he no. didn't get locked yeah, up. Yeah, no, but... when, they, when, they, when they, was, they, was, they said ex bangle, because I, I don't think he had made the Hall of Fame by then. Right. They said ex bangle, Anthony Munoz is gay. Hmm, that's interesting. 
Um, He's that, an ex Baylor. No, I'm not. I'm not trying. They're right that they are ex whatever team it you is. They're right. What you don't like? Is I don't the like that, that you said. bring in my team bad press. But your <laughs> team is getting bad press because they draft motherfuckers that don't know how to keep their shit together. But that. But that's got when San Antonio to... Holmes was going through his shit. It wasn't a time where they didn't say ex Steeler. But he was a most recent Steeler. Troy Smith has not been a Raven for six years. Hey, well, then he need to get his life together. Maybe they should have hired him. Yeah, he, him. Do, he do need to get his well, life together. Because if his life was together... You then see this dude's mugshot right here. This dude's mugshot. Dude, this dude, gram, look, yeah. dude, look, dude look mugly right now, you put yo. that shit on the gram, yo. <laughs> Word. Put that nigga uh, mugshot on the gram, yo. Word up. So baseball season's finally here. Oh, I forgot about baseball. And, uh, yeah, we, we got like five minutes left in the show, so... Um, just some quick predictions, just kind of off the head. Nationals. That's it? Just Nationals? Nationals, son. Nationals. Hey, man. I, I, hey, look, man. Watch the Nationals, man. It's that time, man. They going to win the division? They going to win the motherfucking division, man. They, they going to they uh, gonna win the pennant? Give me the pennant, man. They going to give you the pennant? Give me the pennant, man. You sure? Bryce Hopper going to get that MVP again. You know what I'm saying? He gonna be the 500 million boy. Now that I agree with, I I, I actually think that Bryce Harper is gonna get another MVP this season. Yeah, I actually, I actually think that's gonna happen. You heard it here, man. Watch um, the Nationals, man. Well, let me give you guys a little bit more <laughs> than what Maestro did. Watch the Nationals, man. In the AL East, which is the toughest division in baseball, it's gonna come down to who can stay healthy. And right now, the Yankees right now, um, their second closer got hit by a pitch in spring training. Mm -hmm. So we're down to only one closer at this point. At least for at least for a month, we'll be with one closer. So we'll see how that pans out. Red Sox, they got David Price. But, you know, there's questions about whether they can stay healthy based on last year. With Toronto, there's questions about whether they can repeat what they did last year. And win the division. Tampa Bay's offense is some garbage, but their pitching is legit, so you never know there. And with the Orioles, they got the offense, they got the defense, but the pitching um, is suspect with them. So whoever stays healthy is going to win this division. Actually, I mean, in terms of American League MVP, seem like Mike Trout's probably going to win it again. I mean, I know that's just the easy thing to do, but I really don't see nobody out there that's really, you know, doing it on the come up at this point. So I, I think he's going to win MVP again. As far as any, everywhere else in baseball, the Royals look good. They beat the Mets um, last night in the game that kind of no, was Matt similar Harvey. to. Huh? Man, Harvey didn't play though. Yeah, he did. He pitched. He did. Oh, he did pitch? He did pitch. He yeah. didn't start. He started. He started? Yeah, he did. So he changed. He, um, that's funny you say that. He convinced the, I don't, no, I don't want to say he convinced the doctors, but I think he convinced the coaching staff that, you know what, I think I could play. The doctors kind of cleared me a little bit. Let's, you know, let's give it a go. So he actually did start in last night's game. Oh, okay. He, he man, I, I kind of feel for Matt Harvey. I, I, I happened to check out the first couple innings of the game last night. And it just seemed like it was the same old, same old from the World Series last year. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who was that bat but for Kansas City, but they hit like a line drive out in left field, and Cespedes drops a routine catch. Mm -hmm. What else is new? Mm -hmm. And obviously that sets up the next batter, and they go on a score run. And then um, in the second inning, there was a mistake in the outfielder by Conforto, I believe. And obviously, they put up a couple more runs in the second inning. So, Matt Harvey, he got no help yeah. from his defense. Mm -hmm. I can't remember how many innings he pitched. I didn't get a chance to watch the entire game. But but if you're a Mets fan, this is sort of kind of reminiscent of what happened last year in the World Series. So, speaking of the Mets, though, I think their pitching is going to continue to carry the team. I don't know about their offense. Mm -hmm. Um, especially with Yoannis being back. I think that was the biggest move that they made in the offseason. I I don't know about their offense, if they can continue to do what they did the second half last year. They're gonna have some they're gonna have some battles and some tough competition, particularly in their league. The Pirates still good. Cardinals always gonna be there. Yeah. 
Dodgers is always going to be there, and the Cubs, who people think are going to win the World Series, they did a lot of things in the offseason to get better. So, Shout out to the Nationals. You, you all about Nationals, hey. huh? Um, one last thing before we get out of here. I, just, I forgot to mention it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pacquiao is fighting Bradley on the 9th. Um, he is? Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to get into <sighs> it because really a third Pacquiao and Bradley fight is, is just for nothing. Um, but it is Pacquiao's last fight. He's so. making money. Hey, it's his, it's his yeah. last fight, air quotations. Right. So uh, we'll see. What, maybe what Adrian Broner can call out Pacquiao. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe Pacquiao will call out Adrian Broner when, if he went. Yeah, there you go. Hey, you know yeah, there you go. So there you go. Just one question before we get out. Do you like the 26-year-old going up against the 40-year-old when it comes to boxing? Yeah, um, because I, I, I believe that uh, Mayweather is still in Top notch condition. I agree. Um, he's young, but Adrian Broner is fast. Um, definitely undisciplined, but fast. Right. So he he might be able to get, he might be able to steal some shots off a of sheer off a of sheer uh, ability. True that. Um, I don't think he'll beat Mayweather, but I mean, all the hype is good. All the hype is good enough, and both of them are show uh, are showmen. Right. So you know you'll get you'll get the little you know the little shit in in between the fight. Yeah. It'll be a good fight. I think. yeah. They're it'll both be a men. Good, it'll be a good fight in the sense of. Um, the casual fan getting what they want. Yep. Some, you know what I'm saying? One more round of, uh, or one they'll more. Get, they'll get more punches out of, out, yeah. of, out of Broner. That's for damn sure. One more Mayweather sighting. Yeah. The money team. Shout, hey, shout out to Ray J. You, you remember that Remember that whole thing? Yeah. With the, with the money, with Yo, him and got, Fab? We got Maybachs outside. <laughs> <laughs> nigga said he's about to fuck Fabulous up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was crazy. But uh, yo, he was on something though when yeah. he did, when he did that interview. No, nah, he was. I mean, I, with I mean, uh, Bedford's Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was. <laughs> oh, I ain't talking about it last week, man. K. Michelle, I love you. Don't be coming for Angela Yee, dog. <laughs> That's not. I mean, I love you too, though. But y'all should work it out, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I think you might have overreacted, boo. Let's come all together. Meet me at the crib. And we can all talk about so crazy. Together, but as yeah, man. go after Uncle Murda and Mano. <laughs> go after them cats because yeah. they the one that brought it up. Hey, uh, folks, just want to let you guys know that if you want to go to a, our archive of episodes, just go to SoundCloud.com, type in the Barbershop Sports Talk, and our red logo is right there, and you can catch all our episodes right there. We are also on StewartMediaAndEntertainment.com. And just look for our show and all of our episodes from episode 21 up until now is right there for you. Don't forget, if you want to reach out to us, hit us up at BarbershopSportsTalk1 at gmail.com. Maestro's on Twitter at BarbershopSPOR2. Also, don't forget, we got Facebook and we got the Instagram page at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. The website is coming soon, y'all. Yep, yep. We doing bigger and better things. We looking to build. We, you know, we... We appreciate everybody that's listening out there in SME, everybody in the chat room. Uh, we appreciate y'all. We hope y'all continue to listen. I'm Trey Frazier. That's Maestro Styles. We'll holler at you next week.